In this video, we'll talk about how gene linkage and recombination can be accounted for in a column map of a cross. If you haven't yet been introduced to column maps, please see the introductory video before starting this video. Before we see a column map, let's remind ourselves about the mechanics of linkage and recombination. Remember that genes can be carried tethered together on chromosomes. For example, let's look at this female fly. We see her third chromosome contains three genes all tethered together, stubble, ebony, and humeral. And if we draw this homologous pair, we see all three mutant alleles on one chromosome, and then the homolog with wild-type alleles at stubble and humeral, and the ebony mutant allele. Okay, so we know that in meiosis, this female can give either this chromosome or this chromosome to her gametes, meaning that she only passes on one of the two chromosomes to her offspring. And these genes, all tethered together, will travel as a unit. So you would expect all of her gametes that contain stubble mutant to also contain humeral mutant as they travel together on this chromosome as a unit. That said, remember that recombination can happen during meiosis in female flies. So we have to account for that in our column map. The way we account for potential recombination is by noting all possible parent recombinant genotypes before mapping. So for example, looking at this same third chromosome pair, we see that recombination can happen between the genes stubble and humeral, resulting in these new recombinant chromosomes. This would create a parent genotype that looks like this. You might also think you have recombination potential here, but if you swap these two ebony alleles, you don't create novel chromosomes, so we can ignore that potential. So after accounting for recombination, these are the four potential third chromosomes that this female could pass on to her offspring, two non-recombinant options and two recombinant options. The rule of thumb is that you have to have at least two heterozygous genotypes on a chromosome to see recombination take place to create a new set of recombinant chromosomes. You also need to be in a female fly as recombination does not happen in male flies. Okay, we're ready to column map. Let's look at our parent genotypes and then let's draw their chromosomes just to make things extra clear for ourselves. Remember to account for all the genes on the chromosomes that exist between the parent genotypes. So even though you don't see curly in this female genotype, you will see it in the male and therefore account for it by adding our wild type plus markers as placeholders indicating the wild type curly allele in these chromosomes. You don't have to draw the chromosomes to column map, but I like to do it as we're starting out just to help us visualize the biological processes of gamete creation and fertilization. We already showed that this female could have recombination happen in her third chromosome, creating these recombinant chromosomes that she could pass on to her offspring. Recombination on her X chromosome and on her second chromosome would not result in new allele combinations, so we don't have any other recombinant chromosomes to account for in this case. Now let's map. We compare this female W plus X with the male X or the male Y, and we compare the female W minus X with the male X or the male Y. Those are all of our potential sex chromosome combinations in the offspring, and all of these will occur with an equal chance one quarter of the time. Moving on to the second chromosome, we can pair the female wild type chromosome with the male wild type or the male curly, and we can pair the female lobe with the male wild type or the male curly. So these are our potential second chromosome combinations in the offspring of this cross, and all of them will occur with an equal chance of one quarter of the time. And now for the third chromosome. We'll start by pairing our non-recombinants like we normally do. So this female chromosome can pair with the male TBE or the male wild type chromosome. And this female chromosome can pair once again with the male TBE or the male wild type. We also have to consider these potential female chromosomes that could be in the gamete. So we can pair this female recombinant chromosome with the male TBE or the male wild type and we compare this female recombinant chromosome with the male TBE or the male wild type. 
I like to note which are the recombinant offspring genotypes with the star just to remind myself where they came from. So now that we have accounted for all potential female third chromosome structures that this female could give to her offspring, we see all of the potential third chromosome offspring genotypes. Recombination sure does increase genotype diversity in the offspring. One thing to keep in mind is that recombinant chromosomes and non-recombinant chromosomes may not be passed on in equal proportions. Without knowing the recombination frequency between two genes, you can't determine the proportion of offspring that will have each of these different genotypes. Though you can say you know that in this case, the non-recombinants are expected to occur in roughly equal proportions and the recombinants are expected to occur in roughly equal proportions. That said, if the linked genes rarely recombine, then these offspring genotypes, the recombinants, will be much more rare than these offspring genotypes, the non-recombinants. So let's answer some questions about this cross. How many distinct genotype options might we see in the offspring? We see four sex chromosome combination possibilities, four second chromosome combination possibilities, and eight third chromosome possibilities. So we multiply these together to see that we have 128 distinct offspring genotypes that could result from this cross. I could also ask, how often do you expect to see red eyes in the offspring? Three of the four eye color options show the red phenotype, meaning that they contain the W plus allele. So I would expect three out of four or 75% of my offspring to have red eyes. How often do you expect to see offspring with lobe eyes and curly wings? That only happens here, which accounts for one quarter or 25% of the overall offspring. Now, could I answer the question of what proportion of my offspring will have stubble and mutant humerals? No, I can't. Because that will depend on the recombination frequency between stubble and humeral, which we don't know starting this question. So any questions involving genes involved in recombination to create recombinant chromosomes cannot be answered without additional information. So that's column mapping with recombination at play. If you want some additional practice with column mapping, see my practice with column mapping video, where we'll column map scenarios that include recombination, homozygous lethal genotypes, and balancer chromosomes.